Alright guys, so let's talk about percents. When I see a percent, I immediately think of something dealing with the number 100, either something over 100 or out of 100. So for example here, we have 36%. You can view this as 36%, or you can view it as 36 over 100, or 0.36. If you need to turn a percent into a decimal, all you need to do is imagine a decimal point to the right of a number. So in this instance, 36%, imagine the decimal place here, and all you need to do is move it over two places to the left. Or, as you can see here, you can put it over 100. So the main types of percent problems you'll encounter are percent increase and percent decrease problems. So things like uh, sales tax, tips, um, sales on clothes or items, and uh, trying to figure out the original price of something or figuring out how much of a discount something is. Alright, so here are two examples of uh, percent problems you might deal with. First off, we have a total bill at a restaurant of $36.12. If you want to leave a 20% tip, how much would the tip be? So we know 20% is the equivalent of saying 20 over 100 or 1 -fifth if you were to reduce it down. So all you need to do is take 1 -fifth of 36.12, which is the same as dividing $36.12 by 5. So let's divide that out. 5 goes into 36 7 times. And then we get 11 down here. Move the decimal place up. 5 goes into 11 twice. That gets us 12 down here. 5 goes into 12 twice. And we get a 4 here, so we don't need a round. So we're left with a tip of $7.22. So next up, we have a shirt on sale for $21. The store is currently having a 30% sale. What's the original price of the shirt? So this is a question where we kind of have to think backwards, right? We know the final price. We need to find the original price. So if we know that the store is having a 30% sale, we know that that's the equivalent of 0.3 or 0.30. So 0.30x will tell us the actual discount and that's being removed from the original price to get us 21. x minus 0.3x gets us 0.7x which equals 21. So to find the original price all we need to do is we can convert the 0.7 to 7 tenths x equals 21 and multiply both sides by 10 over 7. So 21 times 10 over 7. You can reduce the 7 and the 21 to 3 and 1. And 3 times 10 is 30. So 30 was the original price of the shirt. So ratios are comparisons of numbers, generally written either as this, x to y, or x over y. If something costs 3 times as much as something else, it would be represented as 3 to 1 or 3 over 1. So here's some sample problems. If the ratio between A and B is 3 to 4, and the ratio between B and C is 5 to 2, then what's A to C? So in this instance, we know A to B is 3 to 4, and B to C is 5 to 2. We want to find out what the ratio of A to C is. So we know that A to B is 3 to 4, but that's not a direct relationship to C since B here is 5. What we can do is find a common multiple of 4 and 5 and then convert this 3 and 2 in order to find out the ratio of A to C. So 4 and 5 both go into 20. So if we were to convert that, B goes to 20, which means we multiplied 4 by 5. So we multiply 3 by 5 and we get 15. And we do the same here. So 5 to 20 is 4, so multiply 2 by 4 and we get 8. So in order to get the ratio of A to C, we just take 15 and 8, and we get 15 to 8. So next up we have a ratio of blue to red candies of 3 to 9, with a total of 48 pieces of candy, trying to figure out how many red candies there are. So to solve this, we take the ratio, 
and we put it to x. So 3x plus 9x is equal to the total number of candies, 48. So let's solve for x here. We get 12x equals 48, and x equals 4. Now we know 3x represents blue candies, and 9x represents red candies. And we're trying to figure out red candies. So all we need to do is put 4 into the 9x. So 9 times 4 is 36 total pieces of red candies. So there are two types of ratios you'll deal with. You'll either have direct variation or indirect variation. When things vary directly, you're keeping the proportion between the numbers the same. And when they're varying indirectly, the proportion is different, but you'll want to keep the total the same the total being a constant. So here are some examples. If four bricks weigh 52 pounds, how heavy are seven bricks? So we know the ratio is four bricks to 52 pounds, and we want to know how heavy seven bricks are. So we can set seven over x for four bricks over 52 pounds, and then all we need to do is cross multiply. So we get four x is equal to 364, 364 divided by 4 is 91. So x is equal to 91. So 7 bricks weigh 91 pounds. Next up we have three people painting a house which takes them four hours to do. And we're trying to figure out how long it would take five people to paint the same house. So this would be an example of an indirect variation where we increase the number of people painting the house but we in, we'd expect the number of hours it would take to decrease. So all we need to do is take the three people painting the house times four to get us 12. We would use this 12 as a constant to figure out how long it would take five people to paint the same house. So we take five people painting the house at x hours to achieve the same constant 12, which gets us 12 over five, which is 2.4. Next up, if I'm driving 50 miles per hour, how long would it take me to drive 200 miles? So this is another direct variation question, like the first question of the bricks. We're driving 50 miles in one hour, and we're trying to figure out how long it would take to drive 200 miles. So we just cross multiply like we did in the first question. We get 50x is equal to 200. 200 divided by 50 is 4. So it would take 4 hours. Alright guys, so that's it for this video. Here's some questions for you to review if you want to go over more percent and ratio problems. And like always, I'll be following up with another video going over how to answer these questions. Feel free to give the video a like if you found it helpful. And like always, subscribe and leave comments below.